really what my bio should say in one sentence is that I help burnout achievers shift into balanced achievers. That's really what my work is all about. And that happens at an individual level. It happens at the team level and the organizational level. So I'll look at individuals who are sitting in this place of burnout. They're wanting more, they're high achievers. They say yes to a lot of things but they're sitting in this place of burnout and they can see they're sitting here and they see where they want to get to and they see the potential, but they just don't have the energy anymore to get there. Organizations are the same way. They sit in this space of flux of being high achieving organizations that have burned out. And we have um, never experienced an, a level of burnout and languish, um, to use Adam Grant's term, than we have these past coming out of these 24 months. And in fact, I had um, a meeting the other day with a clinical psychologist and we were talking about the rate of burnout that we're seeing, particularly in students. So I teach in the College of Health Sciences um, and, and I'm an emotional intelligence advisor to the PA program. And we can, we're can we seeing that students are just kind of feeling this like numbness. Um, and I think that we're gonna begin to see that increasing before it decreases. It decreases and I can talk about that. Why? But my work really is to help us shift out of that place of burnout into a space of balance. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. So I'm going to share the screen. So you can see this image of the woman standing with her backpack at kind of the edge um, here. And I, as a coach, I love to give analogies because I think it helps everybody can be on the same page. And so for this presentation, I want you to think about this metaphorical backpack that you carry with you every day, right? You put it on when you get up in the morning, maybe it's still on when you go to bed at night and it carries all the things. It carries emotions, it carries to-do lists, it carries relationships, it carries all of the things, right? So I want you to think about that, like try to visualize this backpack or maybe a messenger bag, whatever you want it to be for this, for this um, session. And I want you to think about first about packing it, right? Think maybe even about if you're packing it to go on a trip. So you've got this backpack and right now, so we're not metaphorically thinking, we're thinking right now about tangibly back, packing a backpack. And we start to put the things in it, right? So maybe we're gonna go on a camping trip and we think about um, some of the novelties that we need. Like maybe we wanna take a little stove, we wanna take our flashlight, we wanna take some extra water, right? So we pack all of these things in. And as we get to the top of it, um, we realize that we've overpacked our backpack. And our backpack then falls and everything, everything falls out. Um, and some of the stuff that we lose are the, the things that matter most. So maybe at the very top of your backpack is where you packed the flashlight that you're going to need, or most importantly, maybe your lighter. Because you've packed it so full of things that you don't need, maybe you packed five extra pairs of socks or the extra pairs of shoes in case you thought the other ones were going to get wet, right? Whatever that might be. Our lives are the same way. We pack up this metaphorical backpack with a lot of the things we don't need, and then we don't have space for what matters most. And that's where we're really going on this journey today is we're thinking about how do we take this backpack and lighten the load for our journey so we can fill it with the things that matter most. Um, and I'm gonna create some structure for you that you can use again and again and again, whenever you feel like you need to lighten the load. Um, I'll also help you think about things that might be in your backpack that you need to let go of because sometimes we're so um, scattered with what's with all the things in the backpack, we're not sure what we need to keep and what we need to let go of. So I'm gonna help you think about what you need to let go of and help you think about what you might wanna put in your backpack. Um, Before I get to that, I wanna talk about two observations that I've made, both through my own personal work of growth, through my studies, and through the observation of working with clients. The first is, we talk a lot about moving forward, and I'll probably use that terminology too, but really what we want to move into is feeling forward. We are a society that is really accustomed to numbing ourselves, right? And so I think we've got a group of fillers, F-I-L-L-E-R-S, and a group of feelers, F-E-E-L-E-R-S. The fillers are the ones who aren't feeling, right? That seems pretty obvious. We go, I'm guessing all of you can, be, can think about a time when you were filling instead of feeling something, right? Feelings can be hard sometimes. And especially when we're, we're having a lot of emotion, we're feeling a lot at the same time. 
it is sometimes more comfortable to fill, F-I-L-L. And so filling might look like, especially during right now, it might look like numbing out on your phone, right? You, you hop on Instagram or Facebook and before you know it, you spend an hour and you don't even know what you've looked at, right? You've wasted an hour of precious time. That's a way that we fill um, forward instead of feeling forward. It may be that whole like Netflix and chill. It could be things that are a little bit more harmful to us like over drinking, overcompensating in other ways, right? Um, so that's the filling part, the F-I-L-L. It could be, it's also, I mean, there's a variety of ways that we fill versus feeling. And in order to move forward, in order for us to lighten the backpack that we have, we need to feel the emotion that we're experiencing. Um, a great book, if you haven't picked it up yet, I am reading through the Atlas of the Heart by Brene Brown, and it's all about experiencing our emotions. It's an excellent book. Um, but the feeling forward part is so important. So ask yourself, are you feeling or are you filling? And if you're filling, stop the F-I-L-L. I say those words very similar. Um, if you're filling, stop and think about what emotion am I trying to ignore or I'm trying to kind of brush under the rug right now. And I think about that sometimes with our emotions. You know, I like analogies. I think about our emotions sometimes being like those dust bunnies, like we'll push them under the rug and hope that they go away. But what happens is the more we push them under the rug, the more we push them down, the bigger they get. And then that's something else that, that makes our backpacks heavier. And so beginning to think about, am I filling? And I'll do that whenever I'm noticing that I'm scrolling on social media too long. I think about what am I trying to avoid right now? What emotion, usually it's overwhelm. Um, and then how can I move into that feeling so I can move out of that feeling, right? We've got to move in to move out. Um, the other observation that I've noticed are these three S's. Um, I'm using these all the time with my clients now and their space, support, and structure. When I look at, at clients that are thriving, that are moving from where they are to where they want to be, and they're moving from maybe being a burned out achiever to a balanced achiever, it's because they are using space, support, and structure to help them go forward, to help them feel forward. My clients that come to me and they're stuck, they are, they are lacking one, two, or three of these things. And so we get really, really um, clear on where they wanna go in the space, support, and structure. So today I'm gonna offer you that. I'm gonna offer you the opportunity to feel today. And I'm gonna give you the space, support, and structure that you need to unpack that backpack. Um, quickly, what space looks like, it's gonna look different for all of us. So. Um, space may mean going in and taking out the meetings on your calendar that don't matter as much, right? It may mean going in and creating space in your calendar to hold that sacred space for you to think, to be a leader um, instead of doing leadership. It may be space to say, here's my space that I'm holding sacred to go exercise. Space may mean not overcommitting and saying no to things so you feel like you've got time to breathe in your day or your week. Um, space may mean your physical space. Before I did this, um, uh, hopped on today, I got my space all around me really clean and, and clear because that gives me then space to think when I'm not looking at the distractions. So it can mean something different um, depending on the situation you're in. Structure is frameworks and, and formats, right? And what is next? Um, when I'm talking about productivity, structure may look like the difference of using task list and to-do lists. That's an easy one. Um, I'm gonna give you structure today on releasing, right? So it's, it is this kind of mm, linear, but not always process. And then support is what the internal support that we give ourselves to say, I'm worthy and deserving of creating space for myself, right? I am worthy and deserving of saying no to things don't matter most. I am worthy and deserving of releasing. Um, and asking for external support, right, from your partners, from your friends, from your coworkers, to help you as you are navigating something new or you're releasing. And I'll be happy to answer any questions about that as we um, wrap up later. So let's talk about some of those things that you might want to release out of this backpack to create space for you. What I'd like for you to do is grab your pen and paper and just begin to 
write down things that pop in your mind as I go through this list. Um, some, some things will resonate with you right now and some things we might just be planting a seed and some things will resonate with you later today, tonight, tomorrow, whenever. But here's some of the common themes that I see with clients when they need to release. Those are the shoulds, the coulds, the won'ts, the shouldn'ts, can'ts, and won'ts. <laughs> I'll put those in the same thing. We live in the society that really forces us to um, have these unspoken obligations and we don't get permission to be. So I should work out today. I should say yes to that big project. I should go for that promotion. I should um, you know, say yes to everyone else. And, and put myself last, right? Or I can't do it. I don't have the space to do it. I, I, can't, um, I, I can't chase my dreams. I can't, whatever it is, right? So what's that should or that shouldn't, the could or the can't or the would and the won't that you feel like is always nagging you? Um, right, I'm gonna give an example of a client that I worked with that was she, she kept saying, I should lose weight. And so her should was about this weight loss. And the reason she thought she should lose weight is perception of other people. And the losing weight and being healthy weren't anchored together. That wasn't part of her why. It was about how many pounds she thought she should lose to equal health. And we could reframe her story and drop that should of losing weight and reframe it into health that changed the dynamic for her completely. She had space open up and she was able to make conscious decisions that helped her with health and not worry about what the scale said or the pant size said. So that's just one example of what that, that dynamic could be. The other is perfectionism. We are all high achievers. We are perfectionists. We live in a world where we are not good enough. And so where can you find ease in yourself? Where can good enough become your definition of perfect? Right? Because perfect really is an ambiguous thing anyway. Um, and so where, where are areas where perfectionism is keeping you stuck and it's becoming a heavier part of your backpack? What can you let go of? As we move into the holiday season, what are things that you can say, what matters most about gift giving for me is this. So it doesn't have to be perfect in this, right? Um, we can talk more about that again too. Um, limiting mindsets. So those are things saying like, there's not enough time, there's not enough money, there's not enough health, there's not enough, and we're just in this scarcity mentality. Um, that becomes really heavy in our backpack because what limiting mindsets do initially is they keep us from moving forward. What they do long-term is propel us to exist below the line. So we have kind of this um, level where we can live below the line or we can live above the line. And when we're existing below the line, we see the world as a neg with through a negative lens. We may have um, expressions of feeling of anxiety or depression. We lose creativity and innovation. We lose maybe um, this like motivation and inspiration to connect with others or to tap into our passion and our purpose. When we're above the line, we see the opposite things then. We see positivity. We see the good in other people. We see opportunities. And so the longer we exist in a limiting mindset, the further we um, go down and stay stuck below the line. Another thing that people will release out of their backpacks are roles and responsibilities that are placed on them, right? Maybe there are things that your family expects from you um, and you've never had a conversation about work contractual agreement to that, um, right? Um, you, or, or things at work, right? Where you've just become, you know, the point person, but there wasn't really a conversation about whether or not you wanted to accept that. Um, that could be, you know, things like, even just hosting for the holidays. It can be, it can be relatively trivial and short-lived, or it can be something that is daily and daunting. So is there anything that resonates with you in that? The next is, um, I'm gonna talk first about toxic relationships. So if you're um, in a friendship or partnership or even a work environment that is not serving you, um, how do you release yourself from that? I, um, probably about a third of my coaching practice 
is with clients who are um, in a work environment that's not serving them and they're becoming unhealthy and unhappy and it's trickling into their into their um, work. And so it is a process, you know, they just don't say, I wanna leave all of a sudden, but it's a process for them to um, one, find their worth and then two, figure out how they ex express that worth to make a decision about that toxic workplace. And sometimes they stay and things change and sometimes they need to leave. Um, but is there a toxic relationship that's just not longer serving you anymore? Um, then the other two are around emotion. So anger, resentment, regret, is there something that you need to let go of? Um, when I was um, nine months pregnant with my oldest son, my mother-in-law was killed in a car wreck on her way to church on a Sunday morning. And I carried for years tremendous anger towards the man who ran the red light and killed her. Um, it was really hard for myself to forgive him because I thought the moment I forgive him, forgave him, then he somehow had permission, right? Then I didn't, I didn't love her enough anymore if I wasn't carrying that anger anymore. And I finally had to do some soul searching and release that anger. And the space that opened up within me for love and gratitude and all of these beautiful emotions was immense. That was holding so much control over me um, that I then took that control and released it. And it was a great thing. So do you have regrets, anger, resentment that you would like to release that you know would lighten that load? And then the one thing I want to talk about with emotion is grief. So if you're experiencing grief, I'd like for you to put it, imagine putting it in this really beautiful box and tucking it down in your backpack and just carrying that grief with you a bit longer. Um, grief is, while it feels like a really hard and negative emotion sometimes, grief is love. And so holding on to that love and that grief and thinking about maybe how you release that later. Grief is one of those emotions that's a little bit trickier to release. Okay, um, so there's gonna be some more note-taking in just a second about this release, but I wanna show this video. If you've been in one of my sessions, you've probably seen this one. I love it. Um, I love it because it's a perspective opener on what matters and what we might wanna release. Um, I have showed this hundreds of times and I've had a couple of people who have watched it and said, I felt some shame after I watched that and I wanna let you know. Um, and I appreciate that feedback. And what I will say is um, if you start to feel shame, see if shame and regret are similar. So there may be regret that you see from watching this video that feels like shame. If that's it, please anchor into that and use that, um, that feeling to release as we move into the next slides after this video. So I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed. Um, is there a way for someone to tell me after I push play here that you can, um, see and hear this video? If I were a young woman now, I'm not sure I want to cope. With all the things that you have, the opportunities, the technology, I'd like to think it could be a world of pleasure. But I fear instead it would only be a world of pressure. Pressure to be the perfect mother, the perfect wife, the perfect friend. Okay, I know what I did wrong there. So I think now if I reshare it, um, you can see it. So I apologize for that. Here we go. If I were a young woman now, I'm not sure I want to cope. With all the things that you have, the opportunities, the technology, I'd like to think it could be a world of pleasure, but I fear instead it would only be a world of pressure, pressure to be the perfect mother, the perfect wife, the perfect friend, pressure to be successful, a boss, a leader. If I had my time again, I would create a to-do list. I'd create a to-do-do list. I'd give myself the time to indulge in the things that I now understand are the most important, which I wouldn't give to extend those good night kisses instead of moaning about having to get up early in the morning. 
but I wouldn't give an extra second of cuddling my babies before they became too big to hold. What I wouldn't give for five more minutes on the dance floor while my legs were still strong enough to carry me. And this isn't about stopping our fight for equality. Mine was a generation who burnt their bras. But we were never in danger of burning out. No. This is simply about you as a human being. There's the most important word, being. Being lost in the moment. Being at peace with the world. Being kinder to myself. Being kinder to others. Being able to let go and being proud to do so. Believe me, if I were a young woman now, I'd spend more time being. Yeah, I watched this hundreds of times and I still, um, I still get teary when I watch it. It's moving, um, which is why I watch it. And, and I know some of you said, I felt regret because I've not, you know, spent as much time with my children. Yes, I think. I think that as mom, working moms, a lot of us, we, we, many of us, I, myself included, have that regret um, because it's hard, um, right? And, and so again, if you're, if you're feeling, um, be, be, a, be mindful and intentional about that feeling of shame versus regret because um, either can be let go of, and that might be something that you want to work on with this. Um, thank you for, for sharing those of you who shared this with me, um, uh, in the chat. Um, in, in the video, she says, we can, we can, we can let go and be proud too. And so I'm going to walk you through that letting go process. And we're going to focus on one thing, one thing to release. I'm going to encourage you to carve out time I know that's tough, but go ahead and carve out time. Think about when you might want to do this. Waking up early on a weekend, um, you know, sitting in your in your garage when you get home from work and spending five or ten minutes doing this if you have that space to do so. Um, but carving out this precious time to work on releasing. So many times, attendees will participate in a workshop. They get some good nuggets. And take what they're learning and apply it. I'm going to encourage you to take this process that I'm about to show you and apply it for all the things that you need to release out of your backpack. The process will become faster the more you do it. I do this sometimes five minutes before I go to bed at night. Okay. Um, I love this quote here. The next few slides have some of my favorite quotes. We must learn to let go, to give up, and to make room for the things we have prayed for and desired. Um, we are worthy of doing that. We are worthy of doing that. We are worthy of making space for the things that matter most to us. We are worthy of having jobs that are fulfilling and purposeful and move us. We are worthy and deserving of saying no. Right? Um, we are worthy and deserving of releasing. So here's the process. I'm going to give you um, just a quick overview of it. And then the next slide will have um, prompts, and that's where I'm going to give you some space to work through this release. So this is um, somewhat of a linear process, though the this, this second two pieces get a little bit muddy. Um, the third, first thing to do is name and identify it. So as you wrote out the list of things that you want to release out of this metaphorical heavy backpack that you're trudging forward with, pick one of those things and name it. So maybe that is, um, I want to release a, a should. I want to release a regret around this specific thing, um, but name it. Be as specific as you can. And again, I'm going to give you time on the next slide to do more of this. Then the next piece is so critically important, and that is to express gratitude. Um, so I'm going to give you the hard example that I gave earlier of my, of my mother-in-law being killed in a car wreck. So I can name and identify that. I can name it I can talk about what happened. I can talk about how I felt, right? But I want this to be a release that's going to serve me. So it's going to serve me by moving it. But I've got to find some gratitude. I've got to find some softness in the hard. 
And so I'm going to express some gratitude. And my gratitude for this is that the pain was so heavy because I loved so much. So my gratitude is not, there's nothing towards the man, but my gratitude is towards love. Okay. Um, and just a note on that, for any of you ha who have a regular gratitude journaling practice, and I would encourage if you don't have one to start one and try to start two days a week um, and then move up to more days than not in a week. Um, but when you're gratitude journaling, it's easy for us to express gratitude for the things that are easy in our lives. But we grow, our emotional intelligence grows, our empathy um, and compassion for self and others grow when we can express gratitude for the hardest things in our lives. So if you're one of those people that you're saying, I want to get out of this, <laughs> um, this, you know, I want to switch jobs and move into something else, or I want to leave this relationship, find gratitude within that experience, in that situation, and anchor in that gratitude. Um, it, it seems a bit counterintuitive, but I promise it's pretty magical when you do it. So once you express gratitude for this thing that you want to release, you want to journal it out. My favorite way to journal this is to write um, a letter. Um, and it can be an angry letter. The purpose of writing it out is to get all of the emotion that you're feeling around this thing. So around resentment, around shoulds, around you know, titles that have been placed on us that we haven't don't want to accept. Whatever the thing is that you want to release, and we write it out. So it could be written to a certain person. It could be written to that emotion itself. So, right. So I could, whenever I wanted to release um, around my mother-in-law's death, I would write a letter. I knew the man's name. So I wrote a letter to him and I said everything that I wanted to say to him. I was angry, right? And so I wanted to get that anger out. I wanted to process it. I wanted to feel forward, right? And then you burn it or you tear it up or you, whatever you need to do to to, 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 to release it completely gone. And the beauty of destroying what you write in this process is that you can be as bold and raw and true as you need to be to move forward, to release it without having any concern that somebody's going to, um, that somebody's going to read it. Okay. Um, and I have sayings down here and I think you get access to the slides, but I love the process when you're just, destroying it to say kind of this mantra intention type thing, like I no longer need the lessons that these feelings, things, or circumstances have taught me. I can be grateful for the lessons I received, but I don't need the lessons anymore. Um, if I haven't already, I vow to learn these lessons in a different way that feels better and opens my heart. Um, those are just a couple of examples that you could say. So we'll move into the next slide. And this is the structure of releasing. Um, so as you begin to name and identify it, you wanna think not just what it is, but your biofeedback, how you felt. Do you feel like you've got, when you think about this thing, this person, this circumstance, do you feel like you're heavy? You know, you've got that like elephant on your chest or the bowling ball in your stomach. And can you identify the emotion that may be associated with it? Or maybe the emotion is the thing you wanna release. And then what are the feelings, people, things, stories involved in that? Um, and then the gratitude piece I've already talked about as, as have I the write it out. And then how will you release it? Are you going to burn this? Are you going to sink it in water? Are you going to rip it up? Um, I talked about grief a little bit, um, but you, some of you may wanna do this around grief. Um, though I told you not to, but just if that's what's coming up to you, um, I wrote a letter to my dad after he passed away and burning, that was just things that I needed to get out and burning. It felt really like intense and it was more of like a love release. And so I floated, I kind of tore it up and floated it down a stream. So there's really soft ways that you can release too, that isn't as like anger fueled as maybe um, or as intense as burning something. So why don't we take um, uh, about four minutes and that will give us 10 minutes for the rest of the presentation. Why don't we take about four minutes or actually, no, I need to finish sooner. Um, let's take three minutes, we'll be fine. Um, and just begin to, to, to write out your process of releasing following the structure. 
All right. And for the sake of time, I'm going to move on. I'm sorry that I don't, I can't give you more space right now to work on that. But again, you'll have access to these slides. You'll have my email right after this on the last slide. So if you don't get these slides fast enough, if it's okay with the women's form, I can send them to you. Um, so you can carve out time to work on this release. Um, because I want to give you um, a glimpse into refilling that backpack. So once you release these things that feel really heavy, um, how do you identify what to put in your backpack to carry forward with you? And um, one of my favorite sayings as a coach is focusing on what matters most. So what matters most, what matters most, what matters most? I do that with teams when we're talking about capacity for, for employees, especially now um, as we're navigating a pandemic. But I'm always talking about what it matters most. And I've identified, um, along with borrowing knowledge from other, other thought leaders around this, but the four core areas, which I call the four aces um, of our lives. And, um, and so as I talk about these, I would encourage you to jot down two or three things that come to mind in each category that matter most to you. And then I'm gonna give you a prompt around those. So our ace of hearts is our love and relationship ace. When you think about self-love and connection with others, what and who matter most? One thing that it might be, it matters most that I spend time with these people. And what matters most when I'm spending time with these certain people is that we have, maybe it's just a short amount of time, but it's high connection. So maybe um, we're playing a game together or, or cooking a meal together, but it's a high touch high quality time because maybe quantity isn't something that you, you have a lot of. Maybe that what matters most is the relationship that you have with yourself. So when you think about that ace of hearts, what and who matters most? The ace of clubs is our health and wellness ace. And that's our physical, mental, and emotional health. When you think about that health and wellness ace, what matters most to you? Not all the things that matter, but what matters most. Maybe that is um, journaling every day to work on your, to support your emotional health. Maybe it is about, you know, 30 minutes of movement every day to support physical health or drinking a lot of water out of mason jars um, that supports your health. What matters most? Maybe it's a mindset around it. That, example I gave about the client who was focused on, on weight loss and not on health. Our ace of diamonds is our um, career success, financial, our prosperity ace. Um, and so what matters most to you in that? Is that that you're in a fulfilling job? Is it a, the amount of money that your paycheck is bringing in? Um, is it the people that you work with? What matters most in that career and success ace? And then the last and perhaps the most important ace is the ace of spades. And that's our spirituality and meaning and purpose ace. There was some phenomenal research that was conducted about a decade ago now by the Energy Project and the Harvard Business Review in tandem. And they found that when we look at burnout, when we look again at shifting from being a burned out achiever to a balanced achiever, the thing that will put us below the line, the thing that will make us the most exhausted um, and kind of put us in this continual like flux of just feeling languish is not being anchored in our meaning and purpose. So maybe you're in that space where you get up every day and you're a cheerful mom and you love your family and you go to work and you kick butt at work and you do all the right things. Um, you go to the gym, but you're still missing something significant in your life. You're missing that anchor. Um, you're missing, you're missing your meaning of purpose and how you connect to the larger world. Um, without having that answer and really focusing on that meaning and purpose, um, you may continue to still stay stuck in a sense of overwhelm and, and um, burnout. So when you think about spirituality and meaning and purpose, what matters most to you? Is it knowing, um, you know, maybe it's, it's a religious anchor. Maybe it is really getting, you know, doing some of Simon, Simon Sinek's work and really identifying your why and your purpose path. What matters most to you in that area? Uh, 
Um, and then as one of my favorite quotes is mentioned here below. Um, well, actually it was on the, it's, uh, it's on the next slide. I do like this one too. Many things are good. Many are important, but only few are essential. And the essential ones are the ones that matter most. So if you've got a backpack with only a certain amount of space, so if it falls over, everything stays intact. What are those things that you're going to put in your backpack? And that metaphorical backpack to carry forward. And then the last piece about that is in order for those things in that metaphorical backpack to stay intact, what do you need to say no to? And this is probably going to go back and be pretty familiar with the things that you've already released or that you will be releasing from your backpack to create space for those things that matter most. What are the boundaries that you need to put in place? What do you need to say no to? And this is where my favorite um, quote is by Sue Monk Kidd. In order to say yes to what matters most, we must say no to good things. A lot of times I think when we're talking about saying no, we think that we're going to say no to things that we don't want to do, that don't feel really good anyway, but we're saying yes. We also see need to say no to things that are really good right now. In order to self-preserve, in order to have that backpack that feels light and serving to us, we have to say no to good things. So as you think about releasing and creating space, catalog the things that you're saying yes to right now and begin to identify the things that you can say no to. There is an art to that. Um, one tip that I'll give you is you don't want to say no to or yes to more things right now. You want to be in the process of saying no. So if there is an invitation that, um, that you receive for something at work, for something social, whatever it may be, um, think about how does it fit into those things that matter most to you? Is it going to feel light or heavy in your backpack? And if you want to say no, say no. One way that you can say no is that sounds like an amazing opportunity and I wish I had the capacity for it, but right now I don't. Or saying no at work may say on something like, I really want to help with this project. In order for me to say yes to this, I'm going to have to put something else aside right now. What do you suggest? Right? That's the support piece that's pulling people in. And even for those of you that think maybe you don't have the support in the workplace that would help, um, just trying this and setting your own boundaries. Um, have the bold permission to, to set boundaries and to say no. Um, so I'm going to um, go to the next slide that has my information on it. If you've got questions about this presentation, I understand that it was um, kind of, we didn't get to do a lot of meaty work. It was just scratching the surface. Um, so if you have specific questions, you can ask me right now. I think we've got a few minutes, about four minutes to answer questions, or if you want me to review anything that I went over, or if you have questions that you're not comfortable asking in the group, you can email me as well. Thank you so much for letting me be here. And I really um, hope that you will take the space to go back through these slides and, and spend some time releasing and focusing on what matters most and thinking about the boundaries that you need to put in place. Thank you.